Hello and welcome to this video. If you are a software engineer or software developer like I am, you have a problem and you might not even know that you have the problem or might not even see it as a problem, but it is one. So if you're curious to find out what the problem is and what it has to do with an old anecdote about physicists, watch this video and find out. But before we dive into the topic, let me briefly introduce myself. My name is Florian. I'm a software engineer and computer scientist, also a software engineering manager. I'm doing software engineering to earn money for now more than 20 years. So I have one or two things to tell about how to be a good software engineer. And that's exactly what I want to do here. I want to help you to become a better software developer, a better software engineer, and to be more successful in software development. Okay, so let's come back to the problem that you as a software developer, as a software engineer have that you might not even know about that. And before we talk about that, let's talk about an old story, an old anecdote that was told about physicists. And this story is about a student in a exam and a professor that did not like his answers at all. So what the professor did is he called up one of his colleagues, another physics professor and said, hey, you need to help me out. I have the student here who gives me a lot of answers to my question, but not the answer that I'm looking for. Tell me what we need to do here. So the question that the student was asked is, you have a barometer and with that you are supposed to find out how tall a specific skyscraper is or a tall building. And what the student said is, okay, yeah, I have an idea. I can go up to the top of the building. I put the barometer on a rope. I let the rope and the barometer down to the bottom and then I measure the length of the rope, and then I have the height of the building. And I said, no, that's not the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, no problem. There's also a different option. It's very simple. You probably will like it. I take the barometer while I'm walking up the stairs, and I hold it to the wall, and I make marks for each barometer as I go up the building. And then in the end, I count the number of marks and I can tell you the height of the building in the unit of barometers. And then we can even use a normal um, meter to measure how tall the barometer is and then we can convert this into the height of the building in centimeter or inches or whatever you want to see there. And the professor said, no, that's not the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, no problem. I have a different idea. So if we have a sunny day, I can take the barometer, set it aside the tall building, and then um, I can measure the length of the shadow of the barometer and then by proportion figure out based on the shadow of the tall building how tall or how what the height of the tall building is. And the professor said again to, to his colleague, right? See, he is not giving me the right answer. And the other professor said, well, but they're all true, right? They all work. It's just not the one that you want to hear, the most obvious one, right? And uh, they asked the student, do you know the obvious one? And he said, of course, 
I can measure the pressure with the barometer at the bottom of the tall building and at the top. And then due to the pressure difference, we can get the, the height of the building. But you didn't ask me for the obvious solution. You just asked me for a solution. And I gave you multiple solutions. Therefore, I don't want to fail because I gave you correct solutions. They work and you get the result that you wanted. The height of the building. And that's exactly the point. right? That's exactly the problem that we have sometimes also in software engineering. And by the way, um, the story is, there is no proof for that, but that um, the student is Niels Bohr, who actually later on won the Nobel Prize for physics. But what I want to tell you with the story or show you with the story is, in software engineering, we quite often have the problem and the challenge that for the one specific thing we want to do, there are multiple multiple solutions and it's really tough to decide which one we want to use and sometimes especially when we do a review or when somebody is reviewing our solution they might have a different opinion of what solution is the best one and what the solution is the obvious one Obvious is different depending on how you approach the problem. And that's a very important thing to understand when you are reviewing code, but also when you make decisions about different solutions. And obviously, there is pros and cons for each of the different solutions, right? The um, rope method just letting the barometer down on the rope only works when you have a very long rope. So you need to carry the long rope up the stairs. The solution with the markings on the wall only work when you actually can do all the marks and when that really works. And it's a lot of work to do that. Um, the shadow, same thing, right? You have to measure the shadow somehow. When you can't do that, you're out of luck. And then, of course, there is the one with the pressure difference that you can do. And the same thing you will find in software engineering, right? When you have the multiple different solutions out there, one might be very good for speed optimization. The other one might be very good for memory optimization. There might be a third one, which is the most simple one that you can come up with or a fourth one that's very complex, but you can extend it and it's very scalable, right? And that's what you need to keep in mind when you solve a problem. Usually there's not only one way to solve it. If somebody is reviewing your code and saying, well, that's not how I... Okay, no problem. There are different ways to solve it. Let's talk about what is your solution? What is my solution? That's the best way to learn about different solutions and then figure out which one is really the best one right now for your specific setting, for your specific problem and your specific needs. And then, of course, you might also want to make some notes on there might be a different solution to do this, right? Maybe even in the code, maybe you even write a comment and say, hey, um, this is how we implemented this. It's now optimized for speed. If for some reason in the future we need to optimize it for memory, we can do X, Y, Z. And so you already know that. Because in the moment that you do the review, in the moment that you do the discussion, you will remember that. But five years from now, when somebody else or even you look at that code, you might have no idea that this is even optimize for speed, right? So at least that needs to go into the comments in the code or in your design specification or wherever you document those things. Have it in multiple places at best, right? Because then you can look it up wherever you are looking at. So the key essence of this video in software engineering, in programming, in software development, we have the problem. And at the same time, the nice thing that 
there is not just the one single right solution or the one obvious solution. There are multiple solutions and we get to choose the one that works best for us, works best for our problem. And that's a very cool thing to have. But it also is sometimes a problem because when you talk with two different people, they might have two different solutions in mind and then you have to agree on a solution. But that's also a great thing because you are learning in the process. So really embrace this, right? Don't get stuck in this. That's not my solution. So it must be bad, right? No, be open to look at the other solution. Don't be the professor that just allows the one correct answer when there are multiple solutions. That's important. And then what you will see is, first of all, you will learn a lot more about the different solutions and what the differences are. If you accept other solutions, you will be somebody that's asked to do reviews, that's seeked out to have discussions about solutions because you are then known that you value the solutions of others when reviewing and discussing solutions and that's important. We have found out what the problem is. I gave you some ideas on how to solve it. We have also found out what this all has to do with the anecdote of the physicists. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please smash the like button and leave a thumbs up for me. If you want to watch more videos in the future about how to become a better software engineer, how to become a better software developer, how to go the step from programmer to software engineer and advance your software career, please subscribe to my channel and I see you in the next video.